software 11.1.6 Cognos Analytics launch live stream. Uh, for those of you who, who may not know me, I'm Ryan Dolly. I'm the director of technology here at PM Square. I'll be taking us through uh, the 11.1.6 release today. And uh, I think, you know, you're going to see this is a, a really exciting release. A lot of high quality, quality of life things that have been put in here as well as some features that I know we've been waiting at uh, for a, uh, we've been waiting for, uh, for a long time. So uh, with that said, we're gonna go ahead and, and get things kicked off. Go ahead and, and let me know in the ch chat uh, if you can hear me. I always say this and, and I think that, you know, at some point I'm gonna retire this, this spiel uh, because you'll all know it, but this is a, a live stream on YouTube. It's different from a webinar that we may have done in the past or, or the type of thing you might see from, from IBM or another partner in that I am actively watching the chat. And the way this works best is, uh, you know, I give you my live reactions. So I, I, I've obviously played around with the release a little bit, but I don't have a super polished presentation to give you. This is going to be, you know, we're doing it live here. Um, and you give me your live reactions to what you see. If something's good, if something's bad, you know, let's talk honestly about it. Uh, this is this is not just a marketing thing. This is for us as a community of professionals to look at the new release, talk about the new release, and, and really discover it together. So with that said, a couple points of order to, to discuss. Um, the first one is going to be related to uh, these live streams uh, themselves. So... Um, if you go to our website and you click on the uh, newsletter sign up, you can sign up for the, the PM Square newsletter. Um, that's one way to get notified of when we're going to do these streams. Uh, another option would be we have a new we have a new uh, live stream only notification list. So you can go to our website and sign up for that. And that is a list that we're not going to use for for marketing purposes. Um, we're not going to use for, for anything but notifying people when our live streams are scheduled. Now, this becomes important because we, in the past, uh, you know, like this live stream, we had to reschedule a couple times because the release date for 11.1.6 got pushed back a few times. So um, if you always want to be in the know about when we're going to be going live with this, with, with a Cognos update or a planning analytics update, that's one way is to sign up for that. Another way would be, you know, this is YouTube. So please subscribe th to our channel, like this video, and then you should see a little bell icon. If you click the bell icon, you'll actually get a notification whenever we go live. And that is important because, as some of you know, who, like some of you I see in, in the chat, like uh, Nick, for example, I just randomly went live without us promoting it to anybody uh, last Friday to install the new version and and start playing around with it for the first time. So we do occasionally just surprise you by going live on this channel. And those are not videos that we keep because they're highly informal. It's usually me trying to solve a problem or explore a concept within Cognos. And the only way you're going to know that we've done that is if you subscribe and click the bell, you'll get a notification on your mobile device telling you, hey, PM Square is live. Um, another piece of... of uh, uh, housekeeping before we get started would be uh, this the genius bar so uh, the genius bar is something that we're doing where you get access to our our top consultants for 15 or 30 minute intervals to just discuss whatever you want so you can see today April 28th uh, Cognos Analytics it was actually I did the genius bar so so to my friends Scott and John who um, who I just did uh, two Genius Bar appointments with. Uh, we, you know, we thank you for taking advantage of that service. It's sales guy free way for you to directly connect with us uh, and discuss, you know, what it is that uh, that you have going on with Cognos or Planning Analytics or any other piece of IBM or, or analytics technology. So please be aware of it. Take advantage of it. Um, the other thing uh, that I would uh, want to uh, discuss here is um, we've revamped the Thrive section of our website. So if you've seen Thrive in the past, um, or you, or if you're curious about what Thrive is, if you go to the PM Square website and look under Solutions Thrive, you're going to see a lot of new information. 
uh, giving you context for what is Thrive, how to use Thrive, uh, and who is Thrive for. So please check that out, and, and if you have any Thrive questions, reach out um, and let us know. So do make sure to say hello in the chat. I see see a lot of familiar faces here. Martin, always good to see you. Same with you, Jerry. Um, Nick, always a pleasure. Joel Mackay, eh, not sure about that guy. Um, yeah, so uh, good to see everybody. I hope everybody out there is safe and healthy. You know, um, certainly we're we're taking the situation in the world right now um, very seriously at PM Square, and and I hope everybody out there is. Um, is doing okay and you know i know that we'll all get through this it's going to be tough times for a little while but i look forward to uh to when this all blows over and we can all meet up at at think or at data and ai forum and, and have a beer or, or two or six uh and and catch up so with that said let's go ahead and take a look at what is in cognos analytics 11.1.6 um Martin, oh, th Martin, yeah, thank you. I'm glad you noticed uh, with the with the Thrive uh, on the Cog Cognos install. Yeah, that took um that took a lot of a uh, long time uh, for us to get that in there, but um, I'm glad somebody saw it. Um, hello from Cape Town, awesome. You know, I I uh, uh, yeah, hello from Detroit, uh, Gil in Cape Town. Um, I would love to visit South Africa someday. Uh, a corn beard. <laughs> Yeah, everybody, right? Uh, yeah, everybody has that. I'm, I'm wondering what I'm going to do. You know, my hair just—I'm I'm debating. Like, do I? There's only going to be two hairstyles um, by the time this is all over. There's going to be buzz cut and caveman, right? Um, and so I, I'm debating which which road to head down. Uh, but we'll we'll see. Um, okay. So enough of the pleasantries. Let's talk about this Cognos release. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice when you come come in here is that there's been a, a slight redesign to how things look. And when I say slight, I mean, I mean slight. Um, Scotland, the Philippines, that's... Uh, I, I'm always amazed at how, how many people, um, Norway, how many people show up to these from all over the world. It, it's really cool uh, that we have such like a global community um, who's, who's participating. Uh, London Calling. One of my favorite albums, uh, by the way, Nick, uh, classic uh, Clash album there. Okay, so what's new here? The icons got a redesign. Um, you'll notice these icons are all different. When you click the new button, the icons here are not all different. Um, let me actually zoom in a little bit. It tends to make things a little easier. So um, these icons are not all different, but a lot of them are. The report icon has been revamped, dashboard icon, notebook icon, story icon. Um, now... Uh, and you'll see the same thing in tools. So in report authoring, uh, in dashboards, the icons have all been redesigned. Now, why is that? The reason for that is that IBM actually has a, um, a an open source design system called the Carbon Design System that, that they use, that they are applying to all of their, all of their um, software. So if you go to carbondesignsystem.com, you can poke around, and as you do, you're really going to you're going to feel very familiar here if you're using Planning Analytics or Cognos Analytics or definitely like the Cloud Pack products, Cloud Pack for Data, really heavily influenced by this Carbon Design System. So if you want to know what is Cognos going to look like in the future from like a visual perspective, a design perspective. It's going to come more and more into conformance with this carbon design system over time, and that's going to be true of of all of uh, of of IBM's uh, software. So uh, that's the first thing to point out uh, that'd be interested in here. Um, changing the icons, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, Venkat, they they do change them a lot. Uh, hopefully, this is the last time for a while, but I hear you loud and clear on that. I, they've I think they've changed at least twice in the 11.1 release stream. Uh, but for sure they, they change a little more than than you might like. Um, now the other thing that I'm going to point out here that's just kind of overall uh, change to the experience is going to be this new learn section. So we used to have help up here. Help was helpful, um, but this learn is way better. So you can see if I pop open learn, now this is this is context dependent. So I'm on the welcome screen and what it's going to tell me is things like 
getting started with Cognos um, and link me to documentation and videos. Um, and the great thing about these videos is, here I'll click on a video, it's actually going to play in Cognos. So I can watch the video in Cognos. And this will, you know, this video is how to create your first report. So I can pop open report authoring and have this video playing on my screen in Cognos and be looking directly at report authoring. Um, so this, you know, this is, uh, I, I think, a huge improvement. And the other thing about this is, it's, like I said, it's context dependent. So if I'm in report authoring and I click this help button, what I'm going to see here are videos and documentation and things like that related to report authoring. This is really a, a great step in, in the right direction. And I would give a special shout out to, um, to Lisa Chen and the people at, at the Toronto on the Toronto based design team for their work on this. This is something, you know, that I, I got a preview of as part of the design partner program. So if you are interested in influencing the direction of of Cognos Analytics, reach out to to Lisa Chen and and people uh, and and the the design partner program because all of this stuff, a lot of this stuff, you know, I I know. I know some of these features before they're in the release. And some of that is because I'm a partner and we're tight with IBM and, and they let us know things. Um, but also, you know, a lot of it is just because I participate in the, in the design partner program. And if you're interested in that type of thing, sign up. You will get to influence the direction of the software and you will get to, uh, you'll get to influence the direction of the software. You'll get to uh, get a kind of a preview of what's coming down the pike so you can, you can get prepared for it. And you'll get to meet some really cool people. The the design teams at IBM, like universally really awesome people to work with. So I highly recommend that you you sign up for that. Um, Nick, yeah. The, so the aligned uh, CA and and PA uh, um, UI, fingers crossed, right? Uh, I I do know that that's their intention. That's the the direction they're working in. Now, when is that going to happen? It's hard to say. If we think about the roadmap, we know we have 1116. It just came out. They've already told us 1117. Excuse me, is the the LTS release, the long-term support release. So presumably, that's going to come out sometime over the summer. And then sometime in the fall, maybe we get 11.2. You know, maybe we get 12. I don't know. I don't. I don't have any special information about that. But I would. I would expect if 1117 is a long-term support release, then whatever comes in the fall. Um, is going to be kind of the next major version, right? So, uh, and maybe that will include that single pane of glass for for CA and PA. I don't. I have again. I have no insider information about that, but that would be my wish list. How do you contact Lisa? Um, you know, if you if you Google, uh, if you go to the IBM Analytics community page. Uh, I think they, they had at one point recently a blog post asking for people to participate in it. So that might be the easiest way to find it. Um, otherwise, you know, if you, you can find uh, Lisa on LinkedIn. I have Lisa's email somewhere. Um, I don't know that I should just be giving it out on a live stream. But <laughs> yeah, you, there, there are places. Go to the IBM community page and you can sign up for, uh, for um, uh, you can reach out to them and, and sign up for the design partner program there. Will there be any change we can expect in the legacy administration portal? I would anticipate probably the next major release, so maybe that one in the fall, if it if it in fact is the next major release, would have something like that. But I have no no specific knowledge about their plans in that direction. So that's all I could really say is probably there will be more and more moving out of that portal and into the manage menu. But I don't know anything about timeline or what features in what order are, are going to happen. Okay, so enough with that. Let, let's jump into the actual features here. The first thing we're going to talk about is going to be dashboards. So let's pop open a new dashboard. And uh, I'm, I'll go ahead and, and pick the trusty Foursquare. Uh, that's your go-to demo template uh, is your Foursquare template. Um, like I said, new icons over here. And... Uh, you're going to notice some differences in in the screen here, uh, in the screen here about uh, uh, kind of the icons look different, but also there's some new stuff up here. So 
Um, we now have the filters. You can show and hide the filters by clicking the filters button. And you'll notice there's now this fields button here. This is because the dashboard UI received what I think is a really high quality redesign. Um, the, it's not uh, the type of thing that I think is going to cause consternation for your end users. Um, you know, where it's like, oh, it's a redesign and I can't figure out how to use it. I think this redesign makes it easier to use dashboards, um, even for people who, who are really good uh, at using it so far. So um, what did I want to pop open here? Uh, let's, let's look at our trusty old Go Sales analysis data source. So I'll go ahead and, and build uh, a visualization here, and, and you'll start to see the differences immediately. So let's grab a bar chart and just drop it into this part of the canvas. And you'll notice it didn't open focus mode. In 11.1.5 and previous releases, as you know, I'm sure this would this would take up the whole screen in what in what was called focus mode. And focus mode was how I would interact. You would interact with the elements, the fields that go into the visualization. Focus mode is not gone. It still exists, um, but its purpose has changed. Now what happens is this fields menu contains all of the elements, the fields that go into a given visualization. Um, so you can see in here, if I go ahead and now I want to add, just build a very simple chart where I'm going to drop revenue uh, into length and on bars, let's drop uh, retailer type. Okay. So retailer type will drop on the bars. Uh, you see, I'm interacting always with this field section here. Now, now this um, section is, it's, it's always in this part of the screen. And this is what I love about this redesign is they took a lot of stuff that used to float around and it would, you know, depending on where the visualization was on the page and where you clicked, the menu would pop up in a different space. Uh, here, it's, it's always fixed. This, no matter what visualization you click on, you will always go to the right-hand side of the screen and look at the field section in order to uh, interact with things like bars, length, why start, target, color, repeat, you know, your local filters. They're, they're always here. You can hide them, you can bring them back, but this is where they're always located. Now, let's say I, I wanted to copy this and make a change to it. As you know, in the past, I would click on this visualization and a bar would pop up, uh, a menu bar would pop up somewhere. Maybe it would be over here. Maybe it would be up here. Who knows, right? Now, it's pinned to the top of the screen. So I click on this visualization. I want to duplicate it. I, I, I have the duplicate button right here. Now I've duplicated that visualization. I can add it to this section. And uh, maybe we'll change this instead of retailer type. Let's go ahead and uh, remove retailer type and add in um, something from the products dimension, product line. OK. Um, now you'll notice when I click between these two, they highlight and then the field section changes to reflect the highlighted uh, menu item, right? Um, so that is, I, I think this is a great, great redesign. Um, now Nick brings up the only, in my mind, downside to this, which is... The fields is located all the way on the other side of the screen. So you are dragging, and I noticed, I mean, I, I had the exact same f feeling the first time I, I opened this was, okay, this is great. I love how this is pinned at the top. Huge improvement in, in interacting with this. Um, but the one downside is why is this all the way over here? Because you have to drag, like I, I use a 1440p screen because, my, you know, my um, my computer doubles as a work computer and a gaming computer. And so I've got a lot of pixels that I have to drag across to get over to this side. So that is the downside. It would be nice if, if they gave us the option to move this um, to the other side of the screen or something like that. And that's feedback that I think we should provide to them. Like, hey, this is a great redesign. Uh, the one downside is just it's a lot of mouse movement to get things over here. 
but otherwise I think this is great. And I think it makes it really clear when you interact with uh, these visualizations where you say, okay, you left click anywhere on a visualization and that will highlight the visualization, gives you this field section and give you your visualization options at the top of the screen. You right click on a visualization to get the context dependent menu based on what you right clicked on. I just feel like this is a very clear thing to explain to your end users, right? Left click highlights the whole visualization and gives you options at the top of the screen. Right click gives you the context options for that particular item that you clicked on. It was so muddled in the past uh, that even, even I would have a hard time keeping it straight sometimes. What's gonna happen if I right click versus if I left click and where on the screen? Um, So um, yeah, so that, that, that's the, the first thing to point out here. I think that's a, a big improvement. Now focus mode, if, if you recall, in the past focus mode was where you had to go to make actual changes to your visualization contents or the fields driving your visualization. Um, now what you can do, focus mode is, is just full screen. They should actually just call it full screen, <laughs> right? It full screens the visualization, takes up all of the available real estate. Um, I feel like this is a much more logical use for this. And the other great thing about it is now that it's been disconnected from actually editing the visualization itself, you have focus mode available in, you know, um, uh, preview mode, I think they call this, um, basically consumer mode. So I can use focus mode, take up the whole screen in consumer mode that wasn't available in the past because focus mode was integrated with your ability to actually edit the visualization. So that's a nice change as well. Um, now let's take a look at uh, some other really good stuff uh, that they have for us in here. Um, the next thing I'm going to want to look at is going to be the changes to, to cross tabs. Um, so they finally, this is something, I mean, talk about, they gave us certain things that we've been asking for um, forever. Is this analysis model or, or a DMR model? Yeah, this is built off of DM, DMR, Rayo. Um, so one thing to note about what I'm gonna show you is that it works with DMRs, it works with power cubes, it works with analysis services cubes, presumably works with um, SAP BW OLAP sources. Um, however, uh, it it does not work with um, with uh, navigation paths in data modules. So you guys know me as the data module guy. I'm always saying use data modules, use data modules. I've been told that this will be in 11.17, um, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see. In any case, the functionality I wanna show you, with that caveat, let's take a look at this because this is great. So cross tab, we're gonna nest a cross tab in here. Now, for those of you like me who, who love PowerPlay, um, this was, uh, was was really great to see. So what I'm gonna do in my cross tab is let's go ahead and you know, we'll do a similar thing where we're, let's put product line in the rows and let's put time in the columns. Um, let's start with a uh, year. Let's drop that in columns rather. Year in columns and let's just grab something simple like revenue to drop into values, okay? Now let's expand this. Now they still have some work to do. Like, why does it always load in like this? Um, I don't know if it's because of, of my monitor size, but it consistently doesn't quite load in properly. So you have to come in and manually adjust these guys um, sometimes. Uh, but look at what we can do here, okay? Uh, so camping equipment. I can expand that to, to go from product line to product type. I can go from product type to the individual products, right? I can go from that to the product detail. Um, so this is really like, this is something that we, we've been asking for forever uh, in dashboards is can I please just have expand and collapse, right? Um, and now you can, uh, you can do it on both axes. So I wanna expand 2010. I go ahead and expand that. And now I'm looking at the quarters in 2010. I wanna expand Q1. There you go. Um, now, can you expand? Uh, you can also drill down, you can see. So here's something I haven't actually tried. So let's try it, right? I'm looking at year. 
Now I want to drill down. Will it just take me down to quarter? Yes, it will. So for those of you um, uh, who who like um, who who love power play, like I, I love power play, we're getting more and more towards the power play style functionality in dashboards. And certainly if you have users who are on power play or analysis studio, you know, they're, they're going to, they're, they're going to be able to find reasons where they say they can't do this. But the reality is a lot of them, for a lot of those users, this really is uh, going to make a lot of sense um, as something that they can start to transition to. Um, now, Caesar asks, can I select a color for a specific output in dashboards? Um, well, what you can, so not really. Let me show you what you can do. Um, what you can do is if I look at this uh, visualization and I look at the properties of the visual visualization, I can create a custom color palette where I choose, okay, the first item is going to be red and the second item is going to be, you know, this color of blue and the third one is going to be black and the fourth one is going to be that, right? I click save um, and it will, oh, I got to give it a name. I spelled palette wrong, but whatever. And you see it'll update to, to show um, that color. Now what you can't do uh, is you can't say, okay, I want camping equipment to always be red. I want golf equipment to always be blue, unfortunately. Now it will do categorical color consistency. So while you can't automatic, you can't manually assign red to camping equipment, if it assigns red to camping equipment, camping equipment will always be red, no matter where it, it appears in the dashboard, right? And that is actually a property you can set here under the dashboard properties, advanced color consistency. So you can turn that off. I personally would never do that. Absolutely, the best practice is to use color consistency on. But those are your options here, Caesar. So, you know, um, it's not as good as, uh, as hey, camping equipment is red, but you can at least enforce that. These, this is the color palette I want you to use. And whatever color you choose for camping equipment, you're going to use it no matter where camping equipment appears. Um, power play lives on. Can we replace power play? We're getting there, right? So you can do a lot of power play like things. Like you can come in here and look at the fields and you know, you can do things like nest in here. Okay, I also wanna nest into the rows, um, something and again, we're doing it live. So if this doesn't work, uh, don't blame me, right? But <laughs> we should be able to um, nest into the rows. Like if I were to look at order method type and look at the individual members of order method type, and I, I want to say, OK, you know, I just want to nest. Um, I want to do sales visit, special and telephone. Right. And I want to nest those under product line. You'll notice that um, it goes ahead and uh, what it should do. Is it has order method type. Now. Uh, where did it put those is the question. I don't see them appearing on the screen. Um, what I expect them to do is to appear here, but they're not. Uh, da -da -da. So that's interesting. Um, I've done this type of thing in the past and it worked. So um, that's of course what happens when you do live demos, right? Um, let's remove product line and see what happens. Yeah, sales visit, special and telephone. So, um, so you can do things like grab individual members and add individual members to this, like you could do in, in, um, in uh, power play but i'm not going to say all of the power play functions are still available like we just saw you know let's try that again let's add retailer type over order method type um, so here's all the retailer types right but it's kind of overriding oh, oh now, now it's nesting order method type there we go so you can see i see what it's doing i just can't see <laughs> you guys are right um, it's nested now there i think there's a way to make them go at the same level too um, in any case, you can see um, how it works there. So I'm just silly. Congratulations, you played yourself. That's my brother. Uh, for anybody curious in chat, Eric Dolly is my brother. Um, uh, so that's what happens. Yeah, I need better glasses. Thanks, guys. 
Um, so, like, you can do a lot that you can do with power play, right? Um, uh, but, uh, you know, specific things, like, this is essentially a custom subset. Um, so, you know, that's really uh, kind of how it works there. Um, I think my instinct kicked in to assume that it wasn't working. Uh, and, and, of course, I, I should owe uh, IBM an apology for that. Um, so let, let's back out uh, a couple of those changes. So that's one thing that I wanted to show. So this is really, I mean, this is really coming a long way. Um, can you drag and drop directly into the crosstab? So um, I don't think so. Let's try that. Like if I just want to drag one retailer into the crosstab. It's thinking, it's thinking. Um, so you, I mean, you can, yeah, it's a, uh, it had a hard time with that. I think you can drag and drop directly into the crosstab in certain instances. So if we were to like start with a, um, a like uh, a blank, um, like we have nothing in the, uh, the columns, right? And so, oh, I wanna add time in. I can drag say year directly into the crosstab, right? Now in that case, like year replaced revenue. So maybe I want to um, you know, it does kind of funky stuff. Like it's not, what you can do and when is not always entirely clear. Um, so it's choosing to put year up here as a measure, right? And then I could nest under year. I could nest under revenue. Um, so you'll have to play around it and get like the um, the correct uh, things in here that, that you expect, right? Um, but in general, that's that's how it, it works. So you can drag and drop items in here. Um, you can drag and drop individual members in here, like like you know, uh, if you just want um, quarter like quarter one, you could drag and drop just quarter one in here. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with this. It's really flexible. Does it work? Rayo asks, does it work with um, relational data? Uh, so the drill up. The, this expand and collapse does not work with relational data um, yet. However, that's pro I think that's coming in 11.17. Caveat, you know, I can't guarantee that, but um, I think it's coming in 11.17. The other thing is uh, you can drag individual members. So this, this access to members is not dependent on having an OLAP source. This works on relational sources too and uploaded spreadsheets. So in a relational source, you could expand the members and just drag an individual year into the crosstab. That's absolutely something you can do. Um, Caesar, uh, I'm not totally sure I understand the question you're asking there. Um, so why don't you uh, shoot it to me in, in an email and, and we can take a look at it. Uh, tool power play to replace will be dashboards. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the idea is eventually, eventually power play, like you'll be able to replace um, uh, power play or dashboards with, um, with, uh, 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 or power play with dashboards eventually. Um, we're still a ways away from that, but we're getting there. As you can see, there's there's things that are not exactly intuitive, right, um, about it, but it's much more intuitive than it used to be. Okay. Here's a, here's a quick little one that you guys are going to love. Which when I hover over quarter, it now pops up with this source thing. So it just shows you, um, you know, in the past, like let's say you were using a, the go sales samples where you know every every namespace in the sample has a time dimension and every time has a quarter field you could never tell like which quarter field am i using here like there's just nothing in dashboards to tell you that now if you just hover your mouse over any individual item in the fields section it will pop up and tell you where that came from so as you can see you know this comes from the sales analysis folder the time dimension you know, the time, time and then quarter, right, is what is where this comes from. Awesome uh, little change there. Um, so that's kind of what's new in dashboards. I think that um, uh, the, you know, I, I think this is really a, a very impactful refresh. It didn't give us a huge number of new features, but it took our existing features, helped 
and, and help to at the very least arrange them on the screen in a way that makes it way easier to use, especially I think for people who, who are new to Cognos. So, you know, if you've been hesitant to roll this out to your end users because, because so much of the functionality was hidden behind context dependent menus and stuff like that, I think this release is really the one to, to start putting a plan together to get this in front of people because it really is much easier to use even if you have to drag something all the way across the screen uh, to get to the fields pane, um, you know, it's still a huge, huge uh, step in the right direction. Okay, so that covers dashboards. Now, let's move on to um, reporting. Now, the reporting is the thing that everyone always asks about. Like anytime I do one of these, it's always, but what's new in reporting? What's new in reporting? What's new in reporting? And honestly, the last few releases, I haven't had a ton to show you guys. There have been some specific cool features like custom visualizations or the schematics feature that are really great features that that I think a lot of Cognos customers will get a lot of use out of. But there hasn't been just kind of like a generic, hey, this is a cool thing for everyone to use. Well, now there is. So let's take a look at what that is. Um, I'll go ahead and, and start with a blank report. Can we have more, yeah, yeah uh, Venkat asks, can we have more controls on the tool tips like Tableau? That would be great, wouldn't it? Um, I'm sure there's a, an RFP uh, in to IBM uh, for, or an RF, what are, not an RFP, what do they call them at IBM? I can't remember what they call them. Um, I'm sure that there's a request in IBM for that. I agree, we absolutely need more controls over the tool tips. So please track down that feature request and upvote it. Um, that's something we have to have. No question about it. Um, okay, so we're going to work from the same uh, same package here. Um, so what am I looking for? Samples. And then models and the go sales analysis. So our trusty DMR package. Now what I, what I want to show you is if you look under data container, there's a new object called a data table. The data table is super cool. Paul Davis, RFE. Thank you, Paul. Paul knows that because he's put in so many. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so the data table um, is uh, awesome. Uh, it is really a uh, what, what it is is it's kind of like the way that we got the 11 one visualizations where um, the way that they work is they bundle up all the data necessary to render the viz they they send it to the browser they render it browser side and that gives you a lot of, of better interactivity oftentimes better performance this is doing the same thing um, with a table right uh, so of course i will be the first to acknowledge um, that they that there there are some downsides to the 11, 11 one visualizations we lost a lot of the fine control that we had over um you know the the cognos 10 charts the 11 one visualizations we don't have them that that fine level of control and so often we find ourselves still falling back to the 11 one charts i'm i'm of course i'm always honest with you guys so you know if i'm being honest with you the same thing will happen here you will find times when you say you know i really just want to control the the padding on um you know a particular cell in a really um you know fine way and you won't be able to do it with this data data table um, so with that caveat out of the way let's take a look at what you can do because it's really cool um, so let's go ahead and, and start building our data table and um, let's kind of we'll, we'll go use the kind of the same types of things that we've been using before. So let's take a look at um, retailer, some retailer information. Let's look at um, region and then country and let's grab retailer and maybe uh, something like um, order method. Um, or no, let's look at products. Products is, is better. Uh, so let's do product. Let's just do pro high level product line and then grab uh, revenue. So I'm going to run this um, and let's just take a look what the output looks like. And then we'll show you what some of the options are for this. Is the data table kind of a deck in active reports? I, I wouldn't say it's like a deck in active reports. Um, what it is, so to, to begin with, uh, Martin, 
and this honestly is one of its best features in my mind look where the scroll bar is so instead of rendering in like a page and if you want to go down to see more data you have to reload the whole page it ran the query returned all the data um, and uh, now it's got the scroll bar right here so you see I can scroll down through the entire data set without having to requery or reload the page that alone is cool but there is so much more that you can do in here some of which they've turned off by default which is puzzling to me so let's take a look at what that stuff is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose to group um, retailer country uh, region retailer country and retailer and then you'll notice by default this enable expand and collapse is unchecked well let's go ahead and check it and now let's run this and see what it does so it comes back and you can see we have the expand and collapse functionality in a table this is something that people have been asking for in Cognos since what ReportNet um, <laughs> right and now it's actually available um, so uh, it's this is you know a huge like this is really 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 nice um, you can tell it to expand or collapse by default so you have control over that whether it's expanded or collapsed by default when you load in you can also control this hash what this hash says so I, I changed it like if you read my blog you'll see that I changed it to read um, expand for data or something like that um, so uh, that's a really nice feature there now the second thing I want to show you guys is if you look in the data table properties and you look at show column filters again this by default is set to no um, let's switch this to yes and run this again And now you can see when this loads in, I have this little down arrow, and this down arrow has a search and a select button, right? And some properties. So you can do more advanced search, ends with, contains, you can sort ascending and descending, right? Um, so you can come in here and just say, you know what, actually, uh, I just want Canada. Now, things that are missing, right? Like I would really like a, an invert button. I don't see an invert button. Um, so that's kind of, uh, you know, I guess what you would do is you would just search for what, maybe Canada. Um, that would allow me to uncheck it. But can I just check it? You know, it appears the answer is no. So, you know, again, things that, that this is the first iteration of this. You know, we need an invert button. But as you can see, I could come in here and say, yeah, hey, you know, I, I don't want to see what's going on in Denmark or Canada um, or China, for example. Um, right and it goes ahead and uh, removes those items it removes them live so there's again there's no requery or anything like that so um, I think this is really uh, an awesome uh, feature and you can see that uh, is this a way to crash your browser yeah it, potentially Martin this is potentially a way to crash your browser now this is where I think things are going for Cognos so it, we, you know if you say well we we don't get a lot of updates for reports and I don't have a good feeling for what is the future of reporting I think the future of reporting is is largely based around giving us objects like this of course there will still be additional functionality fixing bugs giving us quality of life enhancements but I think a lot of it is going to be around interactive um, interactive objects that render in the browser that give you in object filters and things like that um, for example um, there are going to be um, for example there are going to be uh, there are going to be um, new prompts coming at some point and the new prompts are all going to have this type of thing built into them out of the box so no matter what type of prompt it is it's going to have a search rather than having to put in that super old school search and select font uh, prompt or build a search with JS you know every prompt type of the new prompt is going to have an integrated search so this is kind of the direction of things um, when you think about like well what's happening with active reports active reports are not getting further enhancements that's just the reality I think they've publicly said that um, so I don't I don't think I'm breaking any kind of NDA here when I tell you that, but um, active reports are just not getting future enhancements. Instead, what we're going to have is this, 
and then at some point perhaps there will be some f way to like click the disconnected mode button on this or export it to a new type of um, format or something like that I have heard rumblings about that type of thing but I haven't uh, I haven't actually you know I don't know what their intention is in that direction um, Gerald I see that you asked about the user waiting it for it to load and, and I see that Paul answered it so thank you Paul um, we ha you know I, I know you guys have heard me say this before but we have a, 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 a phrase inside of PM square better call Paul and I know Paul's always good for um, for answering uh, the questions that that you guys have um, so there's some other things in here um, that that we could look at so um, the 11.1 uh, visualizations now have uh, measure groups the um, measure groups basically it's like you know you can add multiple measures to the measures section of the visualization um, drill up drill down uh, available in the 11.1 visualizations and then the other thing and, and this is true in, in both reporting and um, uh, dashboards but this is this is pretty nice is just categorical coloring for maps so let me show you that in dashboards it works exactly the same in reporting um, this is something we, we've really been missing it's just been a major request in mapping and Cognos for a long time so it's good to have I'll show you a simple example of it so if we look at the retailers dimension here and we say okay we want the locations um, to be retailer country and then we want to color by what region are they in right so now you can see Americas Asia Pac Central Europe Northern Europe um, they co I, I noticed that the um, the Netherlands are categorized as Northern Europe um, however Deutschland uh, is not I'll, I'll leave it to um, to our, our European uh, viewers to to figure out whether this is accurate but um, but uh, this was what wasn't possible in the past right like you the only thing you could put in location color was like a measure now you can put a descriptive thing in there and it will categorically color the map so I think this is really a, a nice advancement and I can tell you as someone who talks with a lot of existing and potential Cognos customers this is something that when people saw that it wasn't available was really viewed as a deficiency versus something like Tableau or Power BI so it's good that we have it okay um, let's take a look now at changes to data modules hi from Rome uh, yeah someone who see it's 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 always I, I wonder I love it when you guys when you guys hop in and, and let us know where you're from it's so cool um, that we have so many people who watch these from all over the world so let me show you um, an example here of of uh, the changes in data modules so let's build a brand new data module and uh, for this example let's just use the um, say the sales target table okay so no major new features in uh, data modules brexit bug spotted nice Nick <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> that was that was a good one um, no no huge new features but the features are in here actually alleviate a major data modules pain point so let me show you guys what the, that is I'm just gonna delete uh, most of these fields okay so um, you're gonna highlight most of these uh, fields or data items and then let's remove them so let's say I've got an existing data module for whatever reason I've built one it's being used in production and it only has sales year and sales target obviously you're never gonna publish uh, something with only this amount of data in it but for the purposes of our example uh, let's say that um, that these are the only fields in the database okay and we built this data module and people are out there using it and now they've added new fields to this table and they say hey we want to get these new fields into the data module okay how would you have done that in the past um, you would have had to you would have had to 
go into the manage menu in here and go to data server connections and go to um, great outdoor sales and look at the properties and then look at the connections and open the properties of the connection and then go to the schemas and pick the schema you want and choose load metadata right um, and then it would um, then it would load in the, the reload the metadata so that you could see the new fields in data set in data modules and then you would have had to add the new fields well now um, wrong button there now what you can do in data modules is check this out I click on go sales and I have the reload meta metadata button right there so this is great for two reasons the first reason is um, it just saves a ton of clicking and the second reason is that you can give someone permission to edit data modules build data modules and they can reload metadata without having to have permission to actually go into the data servers the data server um, settings in the manage menu right so you can kind of it, this is really nice now do you want to give it to everyone no because as we all know sometimes this metadata load is a really expensive thing uh, to, to, you know Cognos sometimes really bogs down your database or it takes forever to load this metadata so obviously you want to give it out judiciously but for people who need this functionality this is awesome right um, I see okay so I see questions about uh, Martin someone asking is there a way to convert um, framework manager to data modules uh, and then Martin asking who is the partner company who offers the framework manager to data module product I'm glad you bring that up Martin that would be us um, uh, PM square does offer that so um, if you are uh, interested in uh, converting a framework manager model to a data module I do have a, a, a way to automatically do it and I'm happy to talk to you about it please email me rdolly at pmsquare.com and uh, we can take it from there if we have time which we probably won't because these always run long um, and I really appreciate that we have almost 200 people watching I actually am floored that that many people have tu tuned in but um, I can even demo it at the end of today's session uh, if we have time for it so okay so that that's the first thing here so let's uh, looking at our our example remember we only had these two fields and now they've added more fields to the table so I just came in here and I reloaded metadata and now um, I can expand the sales target table I can see all the other fields um, something went haywire there okay um, I can who I would say that appears to be some kind of bug sales target okay ah you see what it's doing there yeah something something is messed up okay well uh, we will file that for the um, file that one for the uh, bug requests but uh, never fear it's easy enough to uh, transition here so same story but let's do it with this table just for example so I've got branch code and warehouse code now um, watch this so now again these were the only two tables we had in our data source we got a call from the DBA said hey those new tables are available we reload the metadata now we can see the new tables here now you can say well what what exists in this underlying database that is not in my data module what are the new items you can now click on this and select show on new unused items and it will highlight them so I can see here um, where all the unused items are I can see the unused items in this table and as you guys know in previous versions of Cognos let's pretend I, I only wanted these address fields right um, and I didn't want any of these other fields I would have to add in the whole table and then delete out the fields I don't want now I can just grab the specific fields I want add them in and leave the fields I don't want behind so this workflow is hugely improved versus what it was in 11.1.5 
so like I said, not a kill, not a killer new feature, right? No, like, um, oh man, now you know it can, it has a new query mode or or anything like that. But quality of life improvement is gigantic um, for people who who are using data modules frequently. Um, does reload metadata work with Excel tables also? I don't know. Let's try it. I'm gonna guess no. I'm gonna guess no. Um, but let's give it a shot. So. Add new sources and um, American time use. So this is a CSV. And it added that in and uh, no. So you still have to do the relink, um, I'm guessing, in order to get the new options in there. Um, but uh, that is the, um, that is, yeah. So it only works for data servers, uh, again, RFE, stop breaking Cognos. I apologize, Paul. Um, so I swear it was Alt F4. <laughs> could the SDK, Paul Davis asks, could the SDK be utilized to programmatically update metadata? Um, I don't know how much I should talk about here, Paul. Uh, that is something that is doable and will be much more doable as, as of 11.1.7. And I'll leave it at that. Um, we can have a conversation about it if you're interested. But yes, there are and there, there will be even more um, options for editing the available uh, editing uh, metadata. Um, not coming through the traditional SDK, but coming through uh, a REST API. Um, uh, uh, so there's a question, is it possible, is it possible to copy a data model from um, cloud uh, to a local Cognos environment? Um, yeah, control Q. So if you do um, control Q slash, you'll see it actually brings up the data model, um, specific data module specification, right? And so you can copy this out. You can actually edit it, edit it and paste it back in. So you could copy this and, and paste it in, you know, from your cloud environment to your on-prem environment. Um, there may be things in here that, you know, you, you may need to edit. I, I can't guarantee, because I haven't tried that, so I can't guarantee that you won't find, oh yeah, you got to tweak certain things in here. Um, but uh, you, <laughs> you, um, you know, you'll have that. Now, Paul Mendelson asks, what is that button in the upper right-hand corner? Um, something cool and interesting. Yes, there are some cool buttons uh, up here. Um, this tricks button. So this is not part of Cognos. Uh, this is something that that um, we make available through PM Square. As uh, these are these are not publicly available, but I guess I can show them to you guys now. So um, let's go ahead and, and just add a bunch of tables into this um, for the sake of uh, an example. Okay, so this is a custom extension that PM Square has developed. Well, uh, I should say Paul has developed. Um, Paul deserves the credit. Two things. One, um, you can uh, reorder the items. So we all know when you're developing these that reordering these is a pain. Um, now we, we put this in, you can automatically reorder. So like the sales target, um, I could say I want that or reordered in ascending, descending, or magic. What magic does is it reorders it, I think, in the order of like identifiers, attributes, facts. Paul will, of course, correct me if I'm if I'm wrong. Um, but uh, the um, you know it'll automatically reorder these items. So you know if I click around like um, order details, reorder ascending, and I click finish. Now if we look at um, order details, um, you can see it's been ordered in ascending order. Um, the other thing that, that this trick does, if we go show data items, this will actually show every data item um, in the model, okay? And you see, uh, if I click on one of them, so I can search, right? Say, oh, I'm looking for um, um, anything with sales. Here's everything with the word sales in it, regardless of what table it's in. Um, and then I can click on, say, sales year or sales target in these various tables, and it will actually select them in the model. And it will tell me, are they identifiers? So I could search, say say you want to do an update of like, um, you know, show me every fact in the model, right? You could come in here and say, okay, 
um, uh, where is it? Usage fact. Here's everything with the usage set to fact in the model. So if something's wrong, like I know for, for you know, that, um, you know, sleeping, maybe age is wrong. I can click on age here. It'll highlight it in the model and then it's highlighted. I can automatically go into the properties and change this, you know, from uh, measure to something else. So um, it's awesome, right? Uh, yeah, so that's something that's not publicly available yet, um, but that's something that we've been we've been working on that um, we think you guys uh, will really uh, will really love when it becomes publicly available. So uh, so we're at the top of the hour. We have still have 200 people watching. Um, I, I am, of course am able to go over. I will pause here and say you know thank you if if you have somewhere else to be you have to drop off to thank you for for coming today. Um, incredible turnout i hope you've seen that that this is really uh, an exciting release with a lot of good quality of life stuff in here uh, to make our lives easier as modelers or um, developers and to give us some cool new tools like the data table i think really is pretty neat and gives a lot of functionality that we've been asking for in cognos forever um, so it's a welcome addition to to kind of our cognos toolkit um, and certainly something that, that I think you can get a lot of use out of for the right use case. When you're designing that pixel perfect report where the padding's got to be six pixels and it can't be four and it can't be seven, you know, you're still going to use the traditional list. Um, but, but for, hey, we just need something interactive. It's got to look good. It's got to function, you know, have the interactive functionality. And the end users don't really care about that level of, of control. I think the data table is, is going to be a fantastic addition. Um, so um, now I'm not stopping now. I'm going to keep going uh, for probably another 10 or 15 minutes um, and we'll do some Q&A and, and I'll show you guys some functionality in here. So um, let's go ahead and uh, talk about some of the AI changes. The first thing I'll notice, and I'm not going to demo it because honestly, I don't particularly have the skills related to this, but notebooks can now process not just Python, but um, they, they can run the Python kernel and now the R kernel as well. So I, I will I will give my 30 mi second 30 minute my 30 second explanation for why you should care because I know a lot of Cognos people view notebooks as eh, that's data science. Uh, you know I don't really do data science so I don't need to know that. Here are the two use cases for notebooks for you, the BI guy who doesn't do data science. One, your users come to you and they say, well I want to connect to this website. I want to connect to Salesforce. I want to connect to Harvest. I want to connect to this app. I want to connect to that app. I want to connect to this piece of software. You don't have a native connector in Cognos. If that piece of software has a REST API, you can write a connection really easily using Python in notebooks and then automate that. So it will automatically run, use the REST API to pull the data out of Workday uh, and then load the data into a data set and then you can schedule notebooks in a job, right? So you can say every morning or every hour, pull the data out of out of system X, Y, or Z via the REST API, put it into a Cognos data set, and let people have access to it. Um, that's that's your first uh, awesome use case here. Um, your second awesome use case here has flown out of my head, so I can't remember what it was, um, but I'm sure it was great. Uh, just I think general data cleansing and stuff like that. You know, you, you can you don't. There are a lot of cases where you might want to do data manipulation that um, is difficult to do in data modules or impossible to do in data modules. But it doesn't, you know, kind of lightweight ETL tasks uh, or data cleansing tasks. You know, you can. It's pretty straightforward to learn some basic Python to enable you to do that. So even if you're not going to do statistical analysis or data science, notebooks are for you. Um, uh, okay, just taking a look at, at what people have said. Okay, yeah, we're all um, we're all caught up here. So um, let's just take a look at some of the advanced analytics uh, features that you'll see in here. Now, the first one, I'm not sure how easily to show. I know Jason Tavalera did a good job showing it for any of you who who attended Jason's um, exercise uh, earlier. So um, or, or his his thing on earlier in April, but. Um, let's just try to, to show an example. So um, if I come in here and I say, oh, this is not going to work because I'm on a rats. 
Um, let's go to a new, let's do a new dashboard and grab a relational data set. As, as you guys are probably aware, these, um, all of the AI features don't necessarily work with uh, OLAP sources. So let's grab Go Sales Query. Um, in fact, let's not even do that because that one is even a little fussy. Let's just do a, a whole other brand new one and just grab the Go Sales Data Module. Okay. So if I go in here and I say to this, I, I like how these are still on the screen. Like that's just, let's reload. Yep, that's fine. I do use a slightly non-standard browser. I mean, it's basically Chrome, but um, occasionally it causes weird stuff in Cognos. So I would like to just check chalk it up to that, but um, we'll see. Okay, so Great Outdoors Data Module. So if I come in here and I say, um, show uh, revenue by year, something very simple. And we wait a second for it to think, and then it's showing me revenue by year, right? And it's suggesting this line chart so i come in and i go ahead and i say ah you know what i want this to be an area chart instead and i save this dashboard and this is key you have to actually save it that's the only way that the, the ai will learn so um area chart okay now in theory and i will again i will say i, I saw jason tavalaris do this i have not done it myself um, let's do a new dashboard. Um, is there a recording of this? Yes. Uh, so this will be available. Um, this will be available uh, immediately after the recording on YouTube. We leave these up on YouTube forever. So you'll always be able to tune in and, and see what you missed. Um, now, uh, and I, I feel your pain, uh, Venkat, when you say, wouldn't it be nice if it just showed you like recently used packages and stuff like that? Uh, yes, that would be wonderful. Um, but it doesn't. So let's go ahead and grab Great Outdoors Data Module. So in theory, when I type uh, show revenue by year into this, let's refresh this. What it should do, and I, there's no guarantee that it will do this. Yeah, see, it didn't do it. Um, but what's going on behind the scenes is there's now an AI that is dedicated to learning your visualization preferences, right? So um, uh, it, 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 and it, this works on the individual level. So as you take suggestions and say, you know, it suggests the three of these and you grab the um, you know, you choose to use the bar chart instead of any of the other charts, right? And you, um, you know, you take its suggestions and you change them from one thing to another. There's now an AI that is supposed to be learning what you as an individual like and then um, suggesting those things in the future. So if you never use line charts, um, it will it will say, stop suggesting line charts to Ryan, right? Or if you choose area charts instead of line charts. Now, how to get it to trigger again I, I you know this is one of those things that's running in the background and, and its influence will build up over time so it's, it's kind of hard for me to i don't know exactly what to show you to show you it working uh, but i i do know i've seen it work jason tavalaris had a specific example where he did something in here and then you know it it um it changed now martin mentions the uh, create dashboard is a marketing fake and the dashboard is completely useless um uh, in a lot of ways, Martin, I agree with you. They're ma making strides to make it better. So this would be the way that they're doing that. If I were to say, um, so now you can actually give it some instructions when you do create dashboards. So if you were to say, um, you know, create 
dashboard by average profit in Florida. I'm sorry, create dashboard for products by average profit in Florida. Um, why is this not working? Does it not have profit in this source? It should. Gross profit. Let's try that. Create dashboard for products by average gross profit in Florida. So, um, okay, so now it's, it's using the, uh, the, um, the actual, like what I actually said to it to try to build this, this dashboard. Um, so you can see, for example, if we look at this visualization, that there is a province or state filter on it. And if we look at the province or state filter, we see contains Florida, right? Um, we can see gross profit is an average. So gross profit is not uh, an average in um, in the data set. It's a sum. So now when you do create dashboard, you can actually uh, pass into it things like, I want you to be focused on just Florida, and I want you to be looking at average gross profit, not sum, the sum of gross profit. So it is getting a little more useful. I, I think that this is the type of thing it, it, it works, you know, it works nicely in a demo. Um, but, you know, is it like totally fit for uh, for like, it, does it build as good of a dashboard as I would have built? Um, no, it doesn't. I think it's a nice starting place for your end users who um, who don't who really do, like have no ability to build a nice dashboard, you can come in here and look at this and just like use this as the guide, right? So you can come in and be like, you know, okay, um, this is nice, but actually I want it to be a column chart, you know? And then why don't we sort it by, uh, you know, average gross, you know, why don't we sort this by uh, average gross profit and stuff like that, right? So, um, so it is. Martin, it's getting better. Like I, I think, when it was just create dashboard and it made a dashboard that like just had no, like no bearing on what it was that you were, were hoping to, to do. Um, you know, it just it just like did whatever it thought. Uh, this is more tailored. It is actually creating a dashboard based on what I typed in. So that's really nice. That's a big improvement. Um, and it uh, and it it took the filters from the phrase that I that I passed in. So I do think uh, it's a step in uh, the right direction. And I can see as they continue to refine the, you know, like like this this AI assistant is getting better. You you can actually do filters in it now and aggregations, and it is aware of some categorical information like if you tell it you know in 2012 or in florida it now knows those things which it didn't do in the past so it has come a long way it's much less demo aware than it used to be i think the direction is strong but um i agree with you uh 100 martin that like this is not the finished product like i would never i wonder if there's anybody out there let, let's have a laugh for a second if there's anybody out there who is going to build themselves as a Cognos consultant, and what they need, what they know how to do, is type create dashboard, right? That person would not make it very far, um, <laughs> but it's a good starting point, especially for for end users who don't have the level of sophistication that many of us on the, on today's live stream probably have related to to Cognos. Um, uh, so just looking at um, some of the uh, things that people have to say in here. Yeah, like great for a quick demo and a starting point. It's great for a quick demo and a starting point. It's not, it's not, it's certainly not a finished product. Um, how do you, Venkat asked earlier, how do you create a data set with complex joins slash queries? Um, 
So, you know, you can do some of that stuff in data modules. I would probably, what I would do is I would, I would like do it in, I would do it in data modules essentially, and then build a data set off of your data module is what I would do. Now, the other thing I would add is um, I have been told that in, I don't know if it's going to be in 11.17 or in whatever the fall release is, but um, they are working on a, the ability to give you access to the query editor in the data module building interface. So um, those were the two things, uh, the two things that um, I would, I would suggest that you do. Uh, Venkat is, is either do all your, your kind of query building and everything in data modules, and then just build a data set on top of it, or, you know, wait, um, Jerry asks, uh, my users want to know if dashboards can be used as an ad hoc replacement for Query Studio and if they can export to Excel. So yes and no, right? Um, this can definitely be used like Query Studio. I think now that we have expand and collapse and the list object and the um, the list object and the cross tab object are much better and you have access to things like, um, like this is a perfect example. You know, this is a relational data set and yet I can, I can actually expand this and see the members of each data item in the relational data set. Now that you have all this stuff, you absolutely in my mind can use this as a replacement for Query Studio. But what you cannot do yet is export this from, from uh, into Excel. So um, I will be as thrilled as, as the rest of you when that happens. And I can even uh, design tip from, from one product manager to another for IBM you know, um, add it like in here. <laughs> it's so simple. Just give me a button. You even got the menu for it, right? Show disaggregated data. Just add export to Excel right there. Um, the other the other item, you know, I mean, obviously there would be other ways to do it. it would be more apparent on the screen. You know, maybe you add it to this menu. Um, you put it up here in the properties, who knows, right? But, or in the share menu. Have a have a have an Excel option in the share menu. Lots of great places to, to put it. The point is, Jerry, the functionality doesn't exist today. Um, so no, they're not going to be able to use this to export to Excel. But I would, I would choose this over Query Studio 100 times out of 100 at this point. Um, Eric's yeah, and then moving them to reporting. I I, I honestly think reporting has gotten easy enough for a lot of users to use. Um, it really is. Uh, not everybody, um, but a lot of people. Okay. Um, let's see other questions that we see in the chat. A lot of great, um, a lot of great questions and conversation today. It's 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 so good to see everybody here. And I I, you know, I really genuinely mean that. Like um, Nick and and Martin and and Jerry and. You know, so many people who who I know show up to these regularly. It's just it's nice to see you guys and to know that everybody's still doing OK, uh, given everything that's going on in the world. Um, OK. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Gino. Lots of uh, <laughs> lots of lots of uh, lots of people. Two hundred and five viewers right now, which just blows away uh, our, any of our Cognos live streams in the past. I'm, I really can't believe it. So um, at this point, I think those are the main things that I wanted to show you guys in this version. If there's anything I missed, type it in the chat. If there's anything else you want to know, type it in the chat. Um, the other thing that I could show you uh, would just be um, that you may be interested uh, in learning would be um, the... Well, you know, we've already been going for an hour and 20 minutes. So I think, I think, you know, we'll take some questions. I think there's a pretty big delay between what I'm in between. I think there's a pretty big stream delay right now. Um, can you demo the FM model to DM? Yeah, I knew somebody was going to ask that. All right, Jerry, fine. Um, I will do that. And then we'll, we'll, we'll take questions and wrap. Okay. So, uh, uh, Rayo asks, is is there, um, will you show us Thrive, modeling it in DB, demo of FM to data module? Okay, so I could show all of that stuff. We'll be here for another 40 minutes uh, if I do. So <laughs> so we'll see. Um, 
Okay, so first thing uh, to show the FM to DM conversion, I need to um, I need to uh, do a couple things here. Um, so the first one is going to be actually log into the AWS Management Console to grab the appropriate um, two, 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 two. I have to grab the URL or the um, IP so I can RDP into the server where I have the, the conversion utility running. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at this and definitely don't want to share the screen with all of our IP addresses. Um, get that on sandbox. Okay. Okay, so um, let me cancel and yes. All right, so let me just, uh, since this is kind of going off script, let me make sure I have, I think this is the one that we're going to want to show. So um, we can all agree that this is a data module. It's got... Um, and I'm deleting everything in it, and then I'm going to save it. So we can all agree it's empty, right? Um, and now let me show you the data module conversion utility. So the data module conversion utility works by, uh, it's, a, it's a custom application that we wrote that I, I run. I don't run all that frequently, so bear with me if I do anything goofy. Um, but we could agree that that was empty. And now if I go into um, the here, and I'm going to uh, run git bash here. Um, now, the way this works is that it, um, is this the one that, Nope, that's not it. So this is basically a command line um, interface. And here you can see an example of how this works. So I'm telling it, um, I, I do this uh, config file, right? Here's a better one where I'm going to show you, OK, I'm going from framework manager to data module. I'm importing this model XML. I'm outporting, I'm, I'm exporting to this this identifier, this represents the data module that I'm going to export to, right? Um, and then you can do a package filter. So if you want to convert the whole model, you can convert the whole model. If you just want to convert individual packages, you can just convert individual packages. Um, now, once that's done, you uh, come in here and run the EMDM test. And it says EMDM, right? Uh, converting to data module, one input found, model XML to, so it wrote model XML to this object. Um, and now, if I go in and look at this, I probably am going to need to log out, um, you know, because you have to end your session in order to pick up this change for some reason. And I'll also say I haven't run this on 11.1.6, so um, I haven't tested it on this, and it may not work. But it, I can tell you, see, look, 4.28.2020. So the update date changed, and here you go. And this is, it, what it's doing is it's looking at all three of the layers, database, business, and presentation. It's collapsing them down into a single layer. It's doing things like taking these data source tables. So like in the framework manager model, um, retailer, retailer location is actually a, 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 a view that's built at the business layer of four underlying tables that exist in the database layer. We're able to capture all that and reflect it in the custom table functionality here. We're able to, we're able to port over tables written in SQL. Um, well, something got hosed up, but um, generally it works. Um, we're able to port over tables written in SQL. We're able to bring in your um, uh, filters, everything. So we, we really, uh, 
we really change the um, the uh, like we're, we're really able to take the um, the framework manager style structure and convert it into a data module style structure while still retaining everything um, that you need to um, to get out of it so um, that's really the the uh, the conversion utility in, in a nutshell right there so if you're interested in it, again, email me, rdolly at, at pmsquare.com. Um, relative time in Framework Manager without having the time dimension. So kind of, let me show you. Actually, um, I have a, a, a blog. I, I wrote a blog about this. So you can't do it directly in Framework Manager. But um, if you go to my personal blog and you look at... Um, Here's my personal blog and categories, uh, Cognos, data modules. Um, and where is it on this page? Do, 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 do. Relative time and framework manager. So if you look at this blog post, I'll paste it in the chat. Um, actually, I can't paste it into chat. Well, I can, but here we go. Paste it into chat here. There we go. Okay, so if you read this blog post, it tells you how to kind of how to fake it by combining your your framework manager model with a data module. So you don't have to have a, a time dimension as long as you have some sort of time stamp. You can import your framework manager model into um, into data modules and then use the functionality from there. Can you schedule dashboards yet? Ben, you cannot. Um, so dashboards don't really have like a, they, you can't schedule them to send output. They're still kind of like um, when you run it, uh, you know, they're still kind of like when you run it, they, um, uh, they pull data at that time. They're not schedulable. Uh, has anything changed in the R6 front end modeling tool? Um, which, you mean data modules, Jerry? Or uh, I'm not sure what, which specific part of it you're, um, you're, you're asking about there. Um, Gil, when you're in an exploration, can you export the rules from a decision tree? Not to my knowledge. Um, uh, Rayo, so at the end of that process, you don't have a package, you have a data module, but the data module uh, inherits exactly the items in your package. So it doesn't it doesn't 100% get you like a package that has relative time, but it does get you an object that is your package with relative time layered on top of it. So um, so I would I would check that out. Uh, Jerry, I, I did cover what's new in data modules um, earlier. So um, after the present, after the live stream is done, you can go ahead and um, and uh, go back and rewatch that section. But basically, there, there's not a big new feature or a new UI or anything. Um, but the the new features are are really geared towards making adding new data into existing modules easier because that process is a pain in 11.15 and earlier releases much better in uh, in 11.16. So um, I, I would encourage you to uh, to rewatch that section of, of the presentation and, and you'll get all the information you need there. Now I know Martin wanted to see Thrive. So I'll take um, I'll take just a little bit of time to uh, to show Thrive and then and then we'll wrap. Um, so this is Thrive. For those of you who have never seen Thrive before, what Thrive is is it's a it's a custom application that is designed to give you analytics on your analytics. That's what it's all about. It's analytics for your analytics. So it's understanding in the context of Cognos, who's doing what, uh, when and why, um, everything like that. Uh, that's what Thrive is all about. So you can see when you log in here, you got a lot of high level statistics, excuse me, um, about, uh, uh, you know, what's going on in your environment, total users, executions, which features are being used, right? 
what's being created, so how many dashboards or explorations have been built, how many reports have been built. This is all in the context of a, t a date range. So you could say, well, show me everything for this year. And you'll see it's going to reload, and now it's showing us everything for this year. It's also in the context of a pretty powerful custom filter. So I can come in here and I can say, um, okay, let's create a new filter. And in the new filter, I want to see everything that um, the following users have done. So I'm just going to grab a whole bunch of them, right? I want to see all statistics for these users, but I don't want to see anything those users have done on the um, sales data mart. So let's exclude sales data mart. And maybe we'll call this, you know, um, non-sales users. We'll save it. Here's non-sales users. And now when I come back out here, you can see I can choose those non-sales users. Um, and now I'm looking at that bucket of you, everything that bucket of users has have done, right? All executions related to those users, except any execution that uses that package that we selected, this, the sales data mart, as a data source, right? Um, and as you, so as you, I'm sure you can imagine, this can get pretty powerful with your ability to slice the the environment. You can do users, reports, data sources, folders, or servers. So I could even say, you know what, anything that any execution that processed on server 12, I don't want to see that either, right? Or I only want to see that. You you really have a lot of um, functionality when it comes to that. Um, Thrive gives you really good just bread and butter statistics. So like, show me all the reports that these users have run except for those reports that come from that data source. Here's the list, right? It's interactive, it's filterable, there's lots of drill throughs. So, oh, the quarterly IT revenue. So what's the most used report by that user community? It's the yearly IT report. The yearly IT report comes uh, uses the financial data cube as a data source. Well, show me more info about the financial data cube. Um, here's the financial data cube. Here's when it was created, it was last updated. Here's who built it where it's located in the environment. Here's a report summary of every report that references it and how many executions that report has. Here's a user summary of every user who's used it, how many times they've used it, how many runs over time. Here's each individual execution that referenced that data source. Um, and here's, you know, the report name, when, the timestamp, if there was an uh, which tool it was. Was it a dashboard execution? Was it a report execution? Was it something else? Was there an error? And if so, what was the error message? Which server processed that execution? How long did that execution take to run? Unlike Cognos dashboards, you can export this to Excel. <laughs> um, so, uh, so really deep uh, amount of detail here. Um, you can also get, this just went live last month. Um, you can also get, let me uh, go to no filter here. Um, apparently we're gonna have to update the demo data because we have nothing here. So this is a little sparse. Um, I'll, I'll have my dev team update the demo data, but what you have here is actually an, a view of your upcoming um, report executions, right? So this would be the year view. I can see every month and what report executions were scheduled, how many report executions were scheduled for each month. So this is looking into the future. This bar represents the current time. And here are, you know, January, how many report execute or how many jo jobs or schedules failed, how many completed, and how many exist in a status that we call time anomaly. That means it completed, but it took a really long time to complete, right? It was either way shorter than normal or way longer than normal. So I can see here um, all of the uh, uh, the I, I, I keep, I'm just reading here some people who are popping in who have no idea what this is. That's funny. Um, the algorithm, right? They're they're not made some. They're not always as accurate as we think they are. Um, so you can see in here the upcoming uh, schedules, right? Is this a scheduled report or a scheduled job, and what status is it in? So um, here's a scheduled, like the weekly operations job. Its most recent status is failed. And if I want to understand why, um, I can click on it. And I get this, uh, 
this shows me the job steps and what stat where where those job steps are located so where is the object actually located and its last execution status right and then I can drill through and see the actual job step and get more detail about it the other thing that this gives me is we have this issue tracker this is proactively looking at what's going on in your Cognos environment and creating what we call issue cards so you can see these issue cards of various types adoption performance um, stability or schedule so let's look at the schedule issues this is in near real time it notifies you of when there's a problem with a scheduled job right um, so here is uh, the like a uh, failing schedule the projected scale sales schedule failed not only does it generate a card here that I can come in and see but it will actually alert you so when you have that those those you know you've got a job that failed and that job is the executive reporting job that goes out to you know the 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 VPs of the company and today the only way you know that that job failed is someone picks up the phone and they're like hey the VPs didn't get their reports if you have thrive thrive will email you when that job fails to tell you hey the VP job you know the VP job failed and you need to do something about it um, so I mean that's that's like the nutshell demo of thrive it also tells you um, licensing information so it can tell you you can see here um, licensees license like you have to punch in how many you own and then we'll tell you how many of each license types type you have configured and how many are actually utilized and you can see the list of individuals so this is a great thing for when for you to to make sure you're not over or under deployed right um, and then you know if you have like let's say we had analytics users you know we own like in this case you know we own let's just pretend we own 27 okay um, so we own 27 right but we've got 30 configured and then we can see well all, are all 30 actually being used the answer is yes let's imagine 10 were not being used well then we could click on this and we would get a list of those 10 users so we would be able to figure out um, uh, so we would be able to figure out can we uh, remove some of those users like take away their licensing so that we're back in compliance because we know 10 of them are not using the software um, so that's why I uh, that's why we we built this and th those are kind of your thrive use cases in a nutshell now I'll, so if you're interested in this again contact me rdolly at pmsquare.com um, I see you got some guys in here uh, who are talking about who who just got recommended this um, uh, who just got recommended this from uh, the kind of the YouTube algorithm so welcome for those of you who are just interested in development or technology uh, but maybe aren't in business intelligence or, or are not familiar with what IBM is doing in business intelligence um, that's kind of the purpose of this but we're glad to have you here um, for, for you development guys and, and Martin asked is this just a better FM model so this is not a this is not built on the audit it's built on the audit um, tables and the content store but what this is actually doing is we have a um, an application called Thrive Sync that you install uh, locally that is running that is basically doing an extraction of the data that we need and then it's sending it off to um, a, uh, a MySQL database as a staging area and then from there we're taking it we're loading it into MongoDB and then this is you know essentially um, uh, an, an angular JS uh, front end that we've built that you're looking at so thrive is a uh, there's there is uh, a web application there's a, a cloud version and an on-prem version strongly suggest you use the cloud version it's just um, easier way easier you know, it was built as a cloud app so the on-prem version you have to deploy as if it were a cloud app right so um, it's it's better you know it's I recommend the cloud version um, but we have both um, and that's kind of how it works Martin so um, you know it's not really extending the uh, it's not using the audit package at all um, so this is what Thrive has uh, now Martin in your case you know I'd be interested in having a conversation with you and 
and Nick um, and a few other people on here, we are interested in finding Thrive resellers um, in in Europe. So um, Martin or Nick, you know, if, if the um, the organizations that you know, if if uh, Avantum or um, I know Nick, you recently changed jobs, and I, I apologize, I, I can't uh, can't remember where it is that you moved to. But if you guys are interested in becoming Thrive resellers. Let's have a conversation. And that goes likewise for the FM to DM conversion utility um, and a couple other things that we have coming down the pipe. We're looking for Europe-based resellers of our, our software products. So I would love to talk to you guys about that. Um, okay, I've been going for an hour and 40 minutes now. So um, I wanna thank everyone for coming today. Um, please, you know, um, remember to um, I feel like a YouTuber when I say this, right? Like, like, comment, and subscribe. But uh, it really does make a difference. And if you subscribe and ring the bell, like I said, we do do we do unscheduled live streams where there's just something interesting I want to explore, and I feel like it's the type of thing that maybe our community would be interested in. So if you're subscribed and you've clicked the bell, you'll get a notification. We do not leave those unscheduled live streams up, right? So th those are not the types of things that you can, oh, I'll catch that later. I delete them because it's usually me messing around uh, doing stuff that, you know, may or may not work. So so we don't leave that up. Um, but uh, it's really, you know, it's really been awesome having you all here today. I cannot believe how many people showed up for this live stream. Really thrilled for, uh, about it. Remember to go to pmsquare.com, uh, sign up for our mailing list, reach out to me. If anything you saw today was interesting, we're all we're interested, uh, was interesting to you, we're always happy to help. Um, yeah, and, and stay in touch and and stay uh, stay safe out there, everyone. Um, and you know, we'll all. Um, you know, it was great having you here today, and and I look forward to uh, to seeing you at live streams in the future. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for coming, and we'll uh, we'll be in touch soon.